and we gave him the task condition standards on what they need to do, gave him a time hack, and then he comes up to me. He goes, hey, uh, sir? He's like, what's up, Ranger? He said, I don't think my compass works. So I was like, all right, let me, let me see what you got. I hold the compass, and it's a toy. Welcome back to Leaders Recon. Today, we're in the Ranger Training Assessment Planning Bays here with Sergeant First Class Garcia and RI at uh, WTC. What's up? <laughs> so, can you give us a little bit of background? We're, we're here to talk about RTAC, the Ranger, Ranger Training Assessment course. Can you tell us what is RTAC, for those uh, that don't know? RTAC is just a course that's really gonna help soldiers move to that next step, which is Ranger School. Um, some don't use it as that. They might just come to get the leadership aspect of it, but it really is geared towards Ranger School. So it's a mirror image of Darby phase, which is the first phase of Ranger School. Okay, and, and how long is the course? 15 days. 15 days, okay. Mm -hmm. And it's, so it's basically a pre-ranger program run here by the National Guard. It's a pre-ranger, yeah. Yeah, how is, uh, you know, can you give us a little bit of insight? Like, what is it, what does the course look like? You said you, it mirrors Darby, but for those who aren't familiar, like, what, how does the course break them down? Oh, so, like, the first, like, if you want to break it down into phases, I guess, there, there's the first week here would be considered wrap week. Okay. Which is really where you get those ranger assessment physicals, um, and that's going to be your, RPFT or Ranger Physical Fitness Test. Okay. It's going to consist of two minutes of push up, two minutes of sit ups, a uh, five mile run, and then six chin ups. Um, then you got to do combat water survival assessment, the CWSA. And we do ours different than Ranger School in that aspect because we don't want to break everybody off. Um, but that would consist of a don and ditch of equipment where they're in a flick and they just step into the water. They have to ditch the equipment while underneath the water, turn around, face the RI, and tread water for 10 seconds. And then uh, they do a 15 meter swim. Once they complete that, they go off the high dive, which is like a five meter drop. And they just, really that's just to show that they have no fear. So there's, so there's a couple few things and then what else is, what do you suppose? So land navigation really is the chunk of the, of our tech at least, you know, we do, ultimately four days of land navigation. We have the drift course, which is just a really small area that really helps out the individuals that don't have a lot of land navigation training. So we'll give them that land nav class and give them an opportunity to even just know how to use their compass, the drift course, right? So how is them moving from point A to point B, which way do they drift? Do they drift left? Do they drift right? Are they on with their pace count? Do they have one leg shorter than the other? I don't know. I mean, that's like, that's where we can figure it out. You know what I mean? Um, and then we have, so that's the first day. And then the second one is gonna be what we call the Sierra land navigations. A little bit bigger. Um, some would argue that it is harder than the bigger land navigation course uh, because it's very vegetated, very thick. Um, but, and really we're trying to get them used to using the, L or the LDAs, the roads, you know, use attack points. It's like the easiest way to, to do land navigation. A lot of people say, I'm just gonna dead wreck and I'm gonna go a thousand meters from this point right here, which I really can't tell on a map where it's at. But if you go from that attack point, you'll be good to go. It's a lot easier. And then we do the two big days of land navigate. One's a retest if you have to. And then after that, we do the road march. It's a nine mile here, nine mile road march with a 35 pounds ruck dry. Um, that's what we do at RTAC, Ranger School. They do their traditional 12. Um, but other than that, that's, that's pretty much what RAP Week consists of. We do boards, or the 20 boards. So your react to contact, squad attack. Well, that's, what the, that's this, right? Yeah. A little bit? Yeah. Well, this is the, they don't even get into this, honestly, until that land navigation. So this is TLPs, okay. Troop Leading Procedures. Um, and that's going into your op order process. So we try not to give them that like day one because they are going to not retain anything, right? Uh, we do the, the 20 board, so wrecked contact, squad attack. Uh, we start getting to recon, boom, formations in order, movement. And it's the same classes that they're going to get at Darby. So, well, and, and so, and if, correct me if I'm wrong, but like RTAC is a requirement for National Guard soldiers before they attend Ranger School, right? Yes. And, and all of the, like you guys as RIs are all qualified RIs mm -hmm. over. Uh, that 4th RTB? Yeah, 4th RTB, which is which is ranger school right yeah no definitely so can you tell us a you little bit to, about that yeah yeah right to, it's called right it's a program it's the ranger 
instructor training and evaluation program. And it could take anywhere from like two months to six months. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it qualifies us as RIs, even on the active duty side. Um, so we have to go over there. We have to brief the 20 boards. Well, we don't brief them. We give that class as if we were giving it to the students. And so they have an NCOIC over there that will listen to all of us pitch those classes. And, and you know, making sure that we're including questions, you know, that are going to drive the audience. I get it. They're tired from that CWSA. They're tired from walking eight miles on land navigation. So, you know, it is kind of hard to keep their attention. Uh, but for the most part, we do a really good job with that. In fact, most of the RIs that come from WTC that go over to fourth, uh, we get constant praise from the Sergeant Major because he's always saying like, man, you guys, you guys, are, you want to work over here at fourth RTV? I'm like, well, we can't, we're, we're not active duty. Um, but I think the real difference comes from us being National Guard and we have to apply to come here. We have to put everything we got to even just get hired. Whereas active duty, if you're tabbed, you're probably going to go there, yeah. whether you want to or not. <laughs> <laughs> Be a sign. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, you know, what does that look like then? So, like, obviously, Ranger School is a leadership course, mm -hmm. right? Yep, and it then, is a leadership course. And our tag is really, you know, preparing you for that. So, you said it was focused a lot on the Darby phase of it. You know, is that what our tag focuses on? Really, yeah. is just it's just Darby because honestly, at that point, uh, you're learning platoon operations once you get past Darby. If you get into mountains. You know, look at the platoon operations and for the most part, it kind of mirrors it, but you have the basics, that foundation built from RTAC into yeah. Ranger School. Um, a lot of people think, you know, Ranger School, I'm going to come here and I'm going to learn how to, you know, get a confirmed kill with a, an e-tool or something, right? I actually had a buddy say that oh, recently really? who graduated Ranger School. He thought he was going to learn everything, spies and prize. I'm like, no, man. <laughs> You're like the uh, Ranger School demo at the end yeah, is not yeah, what you actually learned. Exactly. <laughs> it's not the Rangers in action. So... You know, there's there's some like, uh, you know, I would say misnomers out there that like our tech, you know, breaks you down so much that it, it's harder to get through that first, you know, phase of Ranger School there, rap week and whatnot. What you know, what are some of your thoughts on that, and what have you seen as far as success rate for graduates of our tech at Ranger School? So we actually just pulled those numbers back just the other day because oh, nice. um, we had like a VTC that we had to do, but I'm um, comparing us to other pre Rangers. Uh, we're actually one of the top three. Uh, our graduation rate is 67%. Um, from our tech, though, it's 56. Like, we have a bigger attrition rate because um, we just want to make sure that they're prepared. It's not that, oh, that guy looks weird. We're not going to pass him. Like, he just didn't make the standard. Um, but we definitely provide every opportunity possible to get them to that point at Darby um, because the another stat if you will is if they make it through rap week it's 80 percent chance that they will make it through ranger school i mean at that point you just got to worry about not getting injured not getting peered out yeah. and you know just not quitting because there's going to be some days you know <laughs> yeah oh yeah what about so peer is obviously a huge part of ranger school right oh yeah you know and lurk, learn to really work with others right does our tech incorporate that as well so we do have peers in our ftx it's not going to be a droppable event uh, especially because we have students from rtli so they don't even have a lot of like adult interactions in the army and that's like this those are those students to just go straight from yes from basic OSA training to, training yeah. to rtli to our tech so they haven't really had a lot of experience in communicating and working with soldiers that have been in you know for for, for my you know example i went to range school nine years in um, but everyone's equal, right? Same, yeah, same every, RTAC, right? Every, yeah, there is no rank. <laughs> so, yeah, the peers, you know, that provides us opportunity to tell them because we counsel them throughout RTAC numerous amounts of time, not just over peers, but peers included. And we tell them like, all right, well, this is what your buddy is. What this is what everybody's saying about you. Let's see, yeah. like, why is this? Why do you think this is? Um, let's say one of the examples would be, I do not want to share a foxhole with this guy because he has no knowledge. Okay, well, you can't count that against him. He's an RTLI guy who doesn't have a lot of experience. Okay, I'm, and I'll relay that to him. Like, don't let that get under your skin, but you need, that just means you need more knowledge. And they'll be like, well, how do I do this? All right. Well, in your off time, which, you know, you get a little bit of off time at RTAC, read through the book, ask questions, ask somebody who's been in for 12 years. I mean, there's sergeant majors that come through this course. Uh, so now, now talking about like a little bit of that off time, like what does a typical day at RTAC look like? Uh, so a lot of it will depend on the activities that we're doing for that day. 
Um, so if we have land navigation, those days are going to be early, especially in the summer because right, sunrise comes a little bit earlier. We have to make sure that they're done by sunrise. You know, sunrise being maybe 550, you got to do two and a half hours prior to the sunrise, plus time to prep, plus time to get to the land nav site. I mean, I've came in at a, as early as two in the morning um, nice. for land navigation. And then it can lead as late too. So those days we're doing uh, ambush class and then the ambush PE, and then you gotta get some chow. And then we're going to so get, get some more do, classes. do students get like three full meals a day and everything while they're going well, through our tech? Well, here at Artec, yeah. yes. Yeah. Hey, they're gonna, there's going to be so much food that they're going to be throwing stuff away. And I hate to see that too. But um, yeah, no, they have plenty of opportunities. But yet they, they'll still eat as much as they can. They're yeah. still hungry. Our tech's not what it was, you know, five, six years ago. And there's a reason for that. Um, but people were getting broke off. Just as you said before, yeah. it is our, I've heard our tech breaks people off. It used to break people off. I, I went to ranger school limping. Yeah. And I was like, man, I don't know if I'm going to make it, but I'm going to go with it anyways. Uh, but no, we provide every opportunity. They, now they get plenty of sleep too. Mm -hmm. up, you know, six hours of sleep at a minimum. Make sure they get that. So that way they're better prepared for that next day. Give them the best chance. Yeah, well, yeah, what does that look like? So, so you obviously you mentioned fifty some percent attrition rate yeah. when it comes to at our attack. You know, what yeah. what are those big droppable events that you see the biggest percentage of people? Biggest one's going to be the push-ups for the RPFT. Okay. Um, and every class kind of varies when you're talking about the other events. So land navigation, um, this CBSA. So you just got a bunch of people that just can't swim. Uh, the road march. We've had none fail, and then we've had up to seven fail. Um, really, it, it depends on the soldier's preparedness. Like, did he prepare to come here? Did his unit tell him, you're going to RTAC, I don't care? And that happens sometimes. Um, but no, they, they get plenty of sleep. So, so it's a little bit, of, little bit of everything, though, as far as the drop goes, like percentage, you know? Oh, yeah. That, but it's push-ups is the major killer. Yeah, so what, you know, what, what so... Physical fitness, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you hit a lot on the land nav. Like, if soldiers come here without a lot of land nav experience, do you think they can get the stuff they need while they're here in the yes, training, or 100%. is it, or do they need to really prep at? Uh, it would help if they prep. Obviously, that helps out a lot if they can um, prepare themselves because it's ba like Ranger School again is not anything extravagant. It's basic infantry task. Um, so they Just should under know under austere that. conditions. Right? Yeah, under yeah. austere. You know, while you're tired and while you're hungry, while you're cold. You know. But the classes that we do give, right? So we have like a one major block um, in the afternoon and it's one they have plenty of rest. And then actually we altered our, our POI to ensure we had more ex um, of a pass rate. So we had, now we have the three days of land nav uh, refresher, if you will. Okay. So we give them the class, they do the drift course. We kind of analyze like, okay, who's lost in the woods, don't know any, does not know where they're at, they couldn't find the one point. So then we'll counsel them, and then we also give them another class that night. Then they do the Sierra Land Nav, and we get another feel for them like, okay, this guy didn't find any points, he found two points. Okay, so he's getting it, but we're still going to counsel him and be like, tell me your route plan. What, what was your decision-making process here? And... Again, that night we'll give them another land nav refresher. So it's a lot of a lot so of training. I'm telling you, it's they should not go to Ranger School failing land nav. And that's actually in Ranger in Derby phase, the rap week, if you will. It's uh, that's our lowest like thing that people fail. Yeah, that thing that people fail. Okay. Yes. So it's push ups then. Like, push ups, hundred percent. It's a big thing, right? Yeah. And I feel like everyone is like terrified of you know. They, you hear the rumors <laughs> of like, ah, oh, I just got forty eight. And I'm in the 48 club, you know, there's like a million, yeah, there's a million excuses, right? What are your, what are your, some of your advice for students? Like, hey, you're, you're, you know, you're looking to come to RTAC Ranger School, it's a leadership course on the physical fitness side of it. You know, what's your advice for training uh, for, to be successful? For training prior to coming here, I would just ensure you know what the standard is. A lot of people get the misconception that there's an army push-up and there's a ranger push-up, but really there's no... A standard is a standard is a standard. I mean, we don't grade excessive. I mean, you either meet it or you don't meet it. Right? There's no RI roulette in that aspect. So 
yeah, just preparing, knowing what a real push-up looks like, okay? So making sure that you have that body generally straight, right? You're not sagging in the middle and you're not arching in the back. When you go down, you got to break the plane, right? With your elbow to your shoulder and your back, it's all one plane. And then you fully extend your arm. The best way to do that is like fully lock out, right? So I tell, you know, students as they come to my lane, and I give them the same spiel every time. I was like, all right, I want 49 perfect push-ups. I don't want 100. I don't want 51. I want 49 perfect push-ups. And I'll even tell them, if you, if you start doing this in my line, I'm going to tell you, stop, 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 because I cannot grade you effectively, right? So I was like, okay, what do I do, Sergeant? I'm like, all right, go all the way down, go all the way up. Exaggerate the lockout in your arm so I can ensure that you did a full push-up. You go back down, you fully extend. If at any point you need to take a rest, you have to go back to that starting position before you arch your back or sag in the middle, at least until they switch over to the ACFT standards, which I don't know yet when they're going to do that. So what does that look like then? So like, you know, you're talking about like a lot of the standards, right? And, and you know, and I've heard in the past when we've talked to some guests like, hey, just, you know, a lot of, a lot of ranger school and, leader, you know, at being a leadership course is just like, you know, doing the basics well, right? Mm -hmm. And you kind of hit on that with rap week you know i mean I, does the same sort of thing apply to just the physical fitness aspect of it or oh definitely you got to have that foundation and a good foundation at that in order to build on right if you it's like you're playing jenga blocks right so you only have one little crooked stick and then you start piling on top of that if you don't have that good foundation what happens it just comes toppling down yeah and so do you say you think a soldier can show up to Artec just being like a generally fit soldier and be successful, or do you need to prep specifically to get through Artec and then Ranger School? I would say you increase your chances the more you prepare because we have students that just have that natural, okay, he's a generally fit guy, he's got a level head on his shoulder, he, he has a little bit of that fifth principle of patrolling, that yeah. common sense, and just having confidence in yourself, really. I, that's a big one I see. If you don't have confidence in yourself, I've noticed that really affects your peers. Um, so, but yeah, it's possible. If someone who, because I know I wasn't like the best in shape. I was just a, in my opinion, I was just a regular guy that wanted, wanted to be one of the elites. Yeah. You know, I feel like that was, you know, the infantry pinnacle was to be Ranger Tab. Yeah. Uh, so so what is so like you, you mentioned something that kind of piqued my interest there and I was like oh you know confidence in yourself is important for peers at ranger school you know what are some of those traits that you've noticed in students or you know you observe right going through the course where you're like hey you know these are the traits that make you successful um, at this course you know individually outside of, like the physical fitness part that we talked about Okay, so now, and in, in my opinion, that's where I, I look for that a lot during throughout the whole course, but FTX mainly. Okay. Because now they're they're hungry, they're tired, mm -hmm. and now they're leading other students to an objective. So that's where I can really see that, because then you you just see that raw person, right? Yeah. Now they're tired, and they're hungry, and they're in a leadership position. Let's see how they act. Um, but a lot of it is, like I'll say, is confidence. Is okay. If they got that confidence to lead, I mean, no matter you make that wrong decision or right decision, this is the place to do that, right? This is the place to make that wrong decision so you can learn from it. Uh, a lot of them having that experience helps, um, but it's not the end of the world because it, we give those counselings even after the graded patrols during FTX as well. And you have to have some stamina. You have to be able to have that ruck on your back all right, so we do the the road march, right? Nine miles, it's only 35 pounds dry. It's gonna be more than 35 pounds when you go to FTX. So you gotta be able to withstand that weight on your shoulders and still have the, you know, noise and light discipline aspect of it. Um, and yeah, I, I think if they say, have that. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, I, I, I can remember that in ranger school being like, uh, I feel like my shoulders were like the most painful thing. Like I, like I carried the weight just fine all the time, but. Oh, yeah. My shoulders hurt through the whole course. Like I don't uh, think it ever stopped. And I think another mo more important thing is they have to want it. Yeah. You gotta want it. If you like the Ranger Creed says, like 110 percent and then some. You come here without the the right attitude. You it'll be noticeable by us the RIs, yeah. um, but also from your peers. And at that point, you could just be taking up another spot for somebody else who really wants to be here. So just making sure that they have their family affairs and orders at home before they come here, because that's been reasons that 
that has been a reason that we have dropped students. Oh, really? Or they didn't go on to ranger school when we got them a slot. They passed our tag. Um, and I get it, you know, everybody has things come up in their family life. So just making sure you plan accordingly um, for up to, you know, six to eight months, honestly, because some people don't go straight through. You oh, know? yeah, that's me. <laughs> I didn't go straight through. Um, so Yeah, that, that really helps having those family affairs in order and just making sure that they're fully prepared and that they want it. So what was your experience like then a little bit? So like you, did you, you went through Artec. Yeah, I right? went through Artec yeah. in uh, 2014. Nice. How, went, how was that? That was, uh, you know, a lot of you. it was kind of a blur, but I remember it was February 2014. I had just finished another school, came directly here. And it was kind of a, you know, I was nervous because I had been to Ranger School before and I failed back in 2005 and it really destroyed me and it, you know so 2005 2004, that was nine years difference and I wanted it so bad and now it was here I was like oh man I'm in it again here we go what do I do you know I'm just gonna use all my experience um, and it really helped me uh, so then we went to RTAC and I, I it was when they did the the tab runs so we had to run from the CTA uh, from Alpha Company down to the bottom of the parking lot touch the tab if there was a tab I think people kept stealing it or something and then we had to run back up and that was like that destroyed my legs and I am not like a you know I oh, have I remember, chicken yeah. legs you know what I mean so by the time you were even doing a physical event like line navigation you were just burnt out um, but it did help me because it still taught me those 20 boards the way um, that they should be because you know as an in infantry unit sometimes they do things a little bit uh, different than the than the book says and we've had to adapt like that adapt to that because of Iraq and Afghanistan but going through Artec really helped me kind of brush back up on the correct way you know the 20 boards and you know recon and ambush because not every unit does a recon especially not to that detail I feel yeah, like that's required yeah no the detail you know it's on our all right narratives that's a 21 pages you know that of recon all the way from the security halt, all the way to disseminating information. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's that was my experience. It, it really broke me off. I, I was I was given two weeks notice, but I did want it. Oh, well. I yeah. was just not ready all the time. You know, and, and I got a good piece of advice from my uh, platoon sergeant a couple of years ago, and he's like, you ain't never got to get ready if you're always ready. And, you know, I wish I would have had that maybe a little bit before, but uh, I ended up making it through, straight through, actually. Um, oh, wow, because that's a pretty small percentage to go straight it through, was. right? Yeah. yeah, I remember my class was, it was like 410 that actually went to range school, like in process. And 60-something of us went straight through. I mean, we had a graduating class of like 110, but um, our tech, we had like the max capacity, which is 120, and I think we ended up with 50. 50 maybe close to 60 uh, students left but I was limping yeah. I was I was hurting at the end of our tech but because of the the command leadership that has come you know after that and they kind of changed it up to like okay what can we do to increase soldiers chances instead of just breaking them off and sending them on their way and part of that like, I feel like is a little bit of overcoming adversity I don't know what what, what have you noticed that with Rangers students because I, I I hear you know when you go around you, there's I feel like there's always someone with the story of why why they you didn't know, pass? Yeah, why they weren't <laughs> successful, right? But it's like, you know, what do you have to say to that? Because, um, you know, I, like just to use a personal example, like I, I seen had a hairline fracture in my ankle when I showed up to rap week, and my unit was like, no, like we got the square way, you have to go now. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna send it, right? Yeah. And uh, secretly wore a brace underneath my ankle or underneath my boot, like on every event the whole time. <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously came out on the other end, right? And so. Yeah. You know, when it comes to like, you, you talked about wanting it, going through adversity, like what's your advice to students as they're, or, you know, poten soldiers, potential students, you know, potential candidates, right, on what they can do while they're at their unit in an M day status or whatever to help prepare themselves so that when they get to our tech, they can be successful. So there's a lot of resources out there actually. So, you know, one, you have leadership within your organization, yep. talk to them ask them like, hey, what could I do to better prepare myself? They, the experience is all around you. You just got to grab it, right? Um, but there's also resources like the RTTs, which is on the ARTB website. Okay. So they can go from their home, nice comfort of their recliner, kick back, 
you know, having eggnog because it's Christmas, <laughs> go ahead and pull up that laptop, fire it up, go to the ARTV website, look up RTTs. You can download it, print it, and it is the verbatim what they need to know. Uh, you could also, you know, there's the RTTs, your leadership. You can even check out podcasts like these. Well, here we go. <laughs> Shameless plug, guys. Shameless plug. <laughs> Um, no, but uh, talking about what you said before, the um, like they, I feel like everyone has a story. Yeah. The biggest thing is you either come back with a tab or you come back with a story. Right? There's always, there's a million reasons why. And I could tell you the story why I failed in 2005, but I chose, you know, to not necessarily forget that, but to learn from it. I was like, okay, uh, messed up this. How can I fix it? Hey, Sarn. I really suck at this, and I ain't afraid to say it. What can I do to be better at it? And if he doesn't know, sorry, could you lead me in the right direction of somebody who does know? And if he's a good leader, you know, he not all leaders have the answers, but they know where to find it. He can let somebody else know, and then, you know, just seek out that leadership. There should be someone in your chain of command, hopefully, that knows, yeah. you know, basic infantry task, you know, and if not... Well, and that's what I, you know, know I was kind of, you know, when people ask me at, like you know, what is what does Ranger School teach you, right? Uh, you know, I, I my canned response always been Ranger School teaches you about yourself, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are some of those things that you know when you were a student, and then you know now as an instructor, and you see students all the time. You know, what are some of those things that you that you think you see the biggest like evolution in from you know a brand new RTAC soldier that you have here mm -hmm. to seeing them when they come out at Victory Pond. Well, when I see them come out of Victory Pond, they got a smile, from, <laughs> yeah. a grin from ear to ear. Um, but it's really a sense of uh, confidence. I guess I keep going back to that word, but I mean, it must, you know, it must be the key factor here because I know that when I went through, the biggest thing I learned about m myself, or the biggest thing I learned was how much I can endure, mm -hmm. how much I can push through. Um, you know, even wanting to quit. There's days out there was many days I wanted to quit. I mean, that ruck on my back in mountains, I can still feel the pain in my back right now. That's why I'm slouched. No, I'm just kidding. And I wanted to stop so bad. Yeah. And, you know, I kept telling myself, oh. I had a buddy that told me right before I left, one foot in front of the other. Just put one foot in front of the other. And I kept doing that. And I was like, but man, this ain't working. It still hurts. <laughs> So I actually went to go bend down, you know, where you, you know, you slouch over and you slide that ruck up mm -hmm. on your shoulder yep, to get know, a yeah, little exactly. bit of that weight off. And I was like, this is it. I'm done. I'm done. I I'm not moving. They're going to have to pull me from this position. Well, some ranger student behind me wasn't paying attention, had his head down, looking at his feet, probably thinking the same thing I was, and bumped into me. And I was like, whoop, oh, I guess I'll quit tomorrow. <laughs> so that guy... That guy got me my tab, and I tell students that all the time, that you're not going to be the only, if you come here and just be an individual, you won't get your tab. Your buddy's going to earn your tab, or you're going to help your buddy earn his. So when they're in that leadership position, and, you know, when they have to make sure 360 degree security is being met, but he's busy over here, you know, I'm placing the gun, telling him what his principal direction of fire is and someone over here is sleeping, right, but he's not in that leadership position, we now do not have 360 degrees of security. Yeah. So, well, and it's like, it's like, so like, I feel like almost like doing the right thing even when it's really hard, yeah, right? Having it's that like, integrity. Yeah. <laughs> What's the, you know, do you notice that at our tech here? So like once you get through that second uh, physical fitness test, we're, cause that's the last thing, right? Is that the last thing before, like the last of the no, great events? It's, it's the, so RAP Week and RTAC will consist of the RPFA, mm -hmm. which is the same as the RPFT, except you only do a two and a half mile run. Okay. Because we're trying to lead them up to that. And then we have the land navigation, then we have the RPFT, then the CWSA, and then that nine mile road march. Okay, so nine miles is the last thing. So, like, I guess, so after that road march and you made, like, the last round of cuts, right, mm -hmm. do you feel like the relationship changes with the RIs to, like, a lot of mentoring and stuff as they go through the FTX to oh, help yeah. prep them? Or how does that, what does that look like? I, I don't think necessarily RIs change, like, their approach or anything, but that's where the students really get to feel 
the mentoring, the coach teach mentor, because okay. that, and in the first half, we're just trying to, you know, give them the information and we make sure that they know it. And we just, you know, grade them on the physical events. Mm -hmm. We assess them. But once we get to FTX and we're actually in the field and we're like, you know, we're right there on the ground with them and I'm getting down in the prone. And I'm like, see, this is what it should look like. All right. This is what I'm looking for. Sectors of fire at a strong point of position. Um, and they see it. They feel it. We're all a part of the mission. And I think that's where the, it really clicks for the student. Right? They got past the rap week. They're good to go. And you, you'll start to see a little bit more smiles on their face. You know, they're not they don't feel like they're under so much pressure. Um, but, you know, that's not for them to become lax a days ago because, you know, I know when to turn it on and I know when to turn it off. If you start messing up, you know what I mean? We start losing accountability. Things are going to start getting bad real quick. Um, because there's a standard yeah. and we're here to make sure that we teach you the right way. So that way, when you go over to Derby phase, you're good to go, man. <laughs> Solid. You're good to go. So I guess, do you have any, do you have any, you know, you talked a lot about resources. Do you have any like last minute, you know, words of wisdom or piece of advice that you give to prospective students out there? If someone came up to me saying, what do I need to go? What do I need to know? prior to coming to our tech and you know I was in a hurry and I maybe had like 30 seconds I would just say just make sure you really want it get your family orders in a fair never quit and always be a battle buddy right you always got to look out for everybody else to include yourself but those four things like just a quick you know you got to want it I'm telling you you have to want it because you will want to quit and that's normal. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I, don't, I feel like anyone <laughs> who says they didn't want to quit, it's just like they're yeah, lying to you. They're just yeah. like, oh, it was easy. Like, you know, I lost 34 pounds. I had a buddy that only lost six pounds. I'm like, I don't get it. Metabolism. Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I went through in the winter. I, you know, it's a yeah. <laughs> different game. <laughs> yeah, for sure, 100. percent I hate the cold anyway, and now I just absolutely hate the cold. Like, yeah, it didn't change anything. So. No, definitely. But. Anyway, well, thanks for coming out and uh, sharing some of your experiences here, giving a little bit of insight on our tech and what some of these soldiers can do. So Sounds good, sir. Come on by. You're tabbed. You can be an all right yourself. <laughs> One day, maybe. <laughs> thanks for tuning in to Leaders Recon today. If you liked today's episode and you'd like more information, visit our social media pages in the links below or visit us online at www.nationalguard.mil slash leaderdevelopment. If you liked today's episode, please don't forget to subscribe and leave us a five-star review. You can find us wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. <laughs>